Hello guys, welcome and it's me again. I'm here with another Pygame tutorial and today we're gonna be doing one of those sliding number puzzle. Let me just show you here what we're gonna be doing. So it's gonna be something like this where we have a grid in here with some numbers that you can move them around by clicking on them. Okay and there's also a timer and there's also a high score in here okay so you can you have two buttons in here you can reset or you can click shuffle and it will shuffle it and then the time will start automatically and then you can just play the game around and let me just finish this game to show you so once we finish it uh, there we go and then the time stops and uh, if I had a high score less than whatever is in here then this will be updated okay and you can also shuffle again if you want to play again and then the time starts from zero if you don't want to play anymore you can just reset it and it will just reset and the high score here will always update if your timer is less than whatever we have in here okay so this is what we're gonna be doing and for starters here so i have the project folder in here i just call it tile number puzzle and inside of here i have three files so we have the main we have the settings and we have the sprites okay it's going to hold all our sprites the settings is just some constants and the main is going to be the actual game class and i'm going to try to go a little bit faster for this tutorial if you watch my previous tutorial the snake game i explain a lot uh, more in there so i'll probably just go a bit faster on this one and yeah we're just using the same methods as the previous game so we have the main the settings and the sprites and then later we're going to create this high score text file okay so to start go to your settings uh, file and this is what we're going to be using as constants so if you've done my previous tutorial the snake game you can just copy that settings file or at least the colors you can copy it and you can just change the width the heights and maybe the tile size is a bit different in there and we also have this game size constant which uh, this one is three by th uh, three because the game is three by three the grid so if you want to make it as four by four you can just change this to four or to five you can just make it harder basically and it will work dynamically with the game that we're going to be creating and this width here is quite large you can make it smaller if you like it's because I've implemented on my game I have it as like uh, there's a button that I can change the difficulty to medium and to hard so that's why the mid the, the width is very big okay so you can pause here you can copy the settings if you like and let's continue so I'm gonna try to make a bit shorter videos as well and so let's just go straight to the points let's start with our main file here we're gonna be importing some stuff first so let's import by game we're gonna also use random for this and we're gonna use time for the timer and also we have to import from sprites import all and from settings we import all okay what else do we need i think that's it we can create our game class which will take a constructor and in this constructor we have to initialize by game and we also have to create a screen which is spy game dot display dot set modes and inside of set modes is a tuple don't forget to put a tuple otherwise it's not going to work it's a tuple with the width and the height okay uh, we also need a clock uh, no sorry we're going to do the caption first which is a title and now we're going to do a clock which is spy game dot time dot clock 
Okay, I think that's it for the constructor for now. Uh, let's create some instance functions in here for a new game. And we have another one for run. And we have one for updates. And another one for draw. And the last one for the event. Okay. So outside of this class, I'm just going to initialize the game in here. So we're going to create a game object. And we're going to start a while loop in here. And we're going to call the new function and the run function. Okay. So whenever you run this file, we create an instance of the game and then we start we go inside of this while loop which is an infinite while loop we create a new game and then we run the game in this run function for this run function here we're gonna have a variable which is gonna be the self dot plane Okay, and then we're gonna start a while self dot plane. I'm creating this variable here. I'm not passing through straight in here because I want to change this variable at some point. So whenever you manage to finish the game, then we stop playing the game and then we run this again. So we create a new game. So once we stop this, then this is gonna stop and then it's going to go back into this while loop and then it's going to create a new game and then it's going to run the game again. Okay, inside of here we call the clock.tick and we pass FPS inside here, okay? So this is the frames per second that we're going to be using. And self, we call self.events and then we call self.updates and self dot Draw. Okay, and on the events, let's just type in those events in here, just so we manage to close the window. So for events in by game dot events dot get, we will check if the event type is equals to by game dot quit. And if it is, that means we, so we're checking here, pygame.quit, it checks if we're clicking the X button on our window. I will show you in a second. So if we click the button, then we do pygame.quit, and we quit with a code zero. Okay, so if we run this now, uh, what is that? Oh. This should be title, not tile. Okay, so if I run this now, we have a window and we can drag it, it's not crashing. And there's just nothing there because we haven't drawn anything to the window. And if I click this X button in here, it just closes with a exit code, exit code of zero. So it doesn't crash or anything. Okay, so let's draw something in the window. And for this, let's uh, let's call the screen, and we're gonna fill it with a background color. So I assign in the settings here, I assign the background color to this dark gray. And every time we do, we draw something in the screen. We also have to call this function. Oops, by game dot display dot flip, which flips the screen and then draws on the screen. Okay, so if I run this now. You see this dark gray color, it's the same as my pie charm. I think I just got used to it and I like to have my background for my games as dark gray as well. <laughs> okay, so the next thing I want to do in here is to draw this grid. So as I show in here, you see there's a grid in here, it's a 3x3. Three three. So we're going to draw these lines to make this grid. And we're going to be using that 
let me close we're gonna be using this constant 3 in here to do that so if in case you want to make it bigger or smaller or well, I guess you can't really make 2 by 2 you can just change that variable there I will show you what I mean so let's uh, define a function in here which is called draw grid and we're gonna have two for loops in here we're gonna have for row and for the column so for row is in range we're going to create this series of numbers which is going to go from minus one to the game size to that constant times the tile size so it this needs to be in pixel if i just pass three in here it's going to be three pixels you're not going to be even able to see the grid so that's why we have to pass the three times the tile size and we're just going to skip this by tile size as well okay so we're going to do this twice Okay, so if you didn't know this, you can uh, select the line that you want to copy and paste and you press Ctrl D and you just paste it underneath. Okay, so this one is going to be for column and for the row we're going to draw pygame.draw.line and we're going to pass the screen in there, the first argument. The second argument is a color for the line, we're going to pass this light gray. And then in here, we're going to have two tuples, which is the first one is the X and Y coordinates of one dot, one part of the line, and the X and Y coordinates of the other part of the line. So again, in my previous video on the snake game, I explained this very well, because in that one, we had to create a full grid as well. But in this one, we're just going to make three lines for row and three lines for the column. Okay, so if you want to, if you still don't understand how this works, you can go to that video and I explain in there a bit better. And here I'm just going to pass the row and zero because we, we want to skip by row, but the Y we want to keep at zero because that's the top. So we want to keep it zero, but we want to draw into the rows. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And then the second line is going to be the bottom. So again, we're going to skip by row. So these two are the same. And then the Y needs to be a constant, which is going to be the game size times the tile size. Okay. So we're going to have that line at the bottom. And then for the column, we're going to do something very similar, but it's the opposite. Okay, you can try to pause the video in here and try to guess what it's going to be, or try to do it yourself. Try to guess what it's going to be the values in here. So the first one in here, as I said, is going to be inverse of this one. We're going to have zero, and instead of row, obviously it's going to be column because we're in here. And the second one, again, is going to be the game size times tile size and column. Okay, so we have this function to draw the grid. Let's just pass it into the draw function here to draw this grid. Okay, so it's there. When I run this, I have this grid in here. Okay, so it's a 3x3 three three grid. So this is what we're going to be using to place our tiles. Okay, so as I said before, so if you change this game settings to 4, for example, and you run it, now you have a 4x4. Four four. Okay, so if you want to make it even harder, you can make it a 5x5. Five five. Okay, so that's why I use those, uh, this specific height for my game, because the perf perfect height for a 5x5 five five game. Okay, let's just go back to 3 in here. And you will see as well, once we start creating the sprites for the tiles, they will always they will also be dynamic. So if you increase the amount of rows and columns in here for the size of your game, the numbers will be increased as well, and it will dynamically adjust for that. Okay, so I'm going to leave it here for this part one. And I'll come back for part two. See you later.